So this brings us to another topic that we have studied earlier also and that is molar specific heats of an ideal gas. Now the difference is that this time around we will derive the formula for internal energy of a gas by studying the gas at a molecular level and how the random motion of the molecules results in the gas getting its internal energy. Well, before we go ahead, let me request you to press the subscribe button if you have not done already so that you continue to get notifications on all videos that are released. And if you like it, please give it a thumbs up and do share with someone who can benefit from it. So let us see if we can use the formula derived for internal energy to establish the molar specific heats of an ideal gas. So here the sample of gas we'll consider will be a monatomic ideal gas. That is, they are single atoms like uh, say helium or argon and not molecules like oxygen and nitrogen. We also assume that the internal energy is only the summation of translational or kinetic energies of these atoms. Well, we've already found that the average translational kinetic energy of an atom is a function of temperature of the gas and is given as k average is equal to 3 by 2 kT and n moles of such a gas will contain n into Na atoms then we can say that the internal energy of this sample of n moles is n into Na into k average which is equal to n into Na into 3 by 2 kT. Well, if we use the identity k is equal to r upon Na, we can rewrite this equation as E internal is equal to 3 by 2 nRT. And again, this is for a monoatomic ideal gas. So once again, we see that the internal energy of an ideal gas is a function of the gas temperature only. No other variable has any influence on the internal energy. So Using this equation, we will now attempt to find an expression for the molar specific heat of an ideal gas. In fact, we'll find two expressions. One, when the volume of the gas remains constant as we add energy. And the other is when the pressure of the gas remains constant when we transfer energy. And we will use different symbols for two molar specific heats under different conditions. One is CV for constant volume process and the other is Cp under constant pressure. So let us take n moles of an ideal gas at pressure P and temperature T in a cylinder where volume is fixed at, let us say, V. So this is the initial state I of the gas on the PV diagram. And now you add a small amount of energy to the gas by providing heat Q from the thermal reservoir and we do so slowly so that the equilibrium is not disturbed. Now the addition of energy will increase the temperature of the gas by a small amount and say it takes it to T plus delta T and the pressure say moves to P plus delta P so that the final state of the gas is F. And when we do so, uh, let us say Cv is a molar specific heat at constant volume, then we can write Q is equal to N Cv delta T. And if we make use of the first law of thermodynamics, that is delta E is equal to Q minus W or the change in internal energy is equal to the heat provided minus the work done by the gas. We can say that delta E is equal to N Cv delta T minus zero. And here we have taken W is equal to zero since there's no volume change and therefore no work done. Then we can say that Cv is equal to delta E upon N delta T. But from the earlier equation, we established that delta E is equal to 3 by 2 NR delta T. So if we substitute this in this equation, what we get is Cv is equal to 3 by 2 R which is equal to 12.5 joules per mole Kelvin, again for a monatomic gas. And this value matches very well with the experimental results for monoatomic gases. And the CV values for diatomic and polyatomic gases are higher than those for monoatomic gases because these molecules are more complex and can rotate and therefore have 
rotational kinetic energy too. So when heat is added to a diatomic or a polyatomic gas, part of this heat energy goes into increasing the rotational kinetic energy. Hence, you need more heat to raise the temperature of such a gas and therefore higher CV values. Now, this equation can be used for diatomic and polyatomic ideal gases as well, provided the correct CV value is used. So, if an enclosed ideal gas undergoes temperature change delta T, we see that the change in internal energy is delta E is equal to N CV delta T. So, once again, finally, remember a very important conclusion of kinetic theory of gases is that the internal energy of an ideal gas depends only on its temperature and therefore any change in internal energy also depends on change in temperature only no matter what process you adopt. So let us now go ahead and find molar specific heat of a gas at constant pressure and we will use the same setup once again and increase the temperature of the gas by same value delta T, but this time keeping pressure of the gas constant. Then if we say the heat required to raise the temperature of the gas by delta T is Q, then Q should equal N Cp delta T, where Cp is the molar specific heat at constant pressure. Now, if you think a little deeper, what you will see is that now the heat Q that is being provided is doing two things. One, it is raising the temperature of the gas by increasing the kinetic energy of atoms, but at the same time, it is also providing the energy to atoms to work in pushing the piston up. As a result, the energy required or the Q value has to be more than what we needed in constant volume process. Hence, for the same change in delta T, Cp value has to be larger to take care of both the task of raising the piston and also increasing the temperature of the gas through delta T. So let us use the first law of thermodynamics and say that delta E is equal to Q minus W and this time W is not zero since the gas is doing work in pushing the piston up. Now to find work done, we say that W is equal to P delta V which is equal to NR delta T since P delta V is equal to NR delta T. Now the change in internal energy will remain the same for a constant pressure process as for a constant volume process as long as the change in temperature T is same. Well, we see from the earlier derivation for a constant volume process that the change in internal energy when the temperature of the gas changes by delta T is equal to NCV delta T. So if we substitute these values, what we get is NCV delta T is equal to NCP delta T minus NR delta T. And you can clearly see that N and delta T is canceling on both sides. And what you get is CV is equal to CP minus R or CP is equal to CV plus R or CP is equal to 5 by 2R. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for many more interesting videos.